Welcome to the new look, high speed, high risk. Who wants to be a millionaire where life changing sums are now won or lost against the ticking of our big bad clock? If our contestants do not crack under pressure when they get to £50,000, they earn an extra lifeline. The clock is banished and they have all the time they need to get to the million. So, as time is now of the essence, let's get on and meet our first anxious but excited contestant from Dunbar in East Lothian. It's Stuart Craig. Stuart Craig has always worked with kids, helping them with their sporting aspirations and endeavours. He's currently the Basketball Development Officer for Edinburgh Leisure. No, I didn't know such a job existed either. <laughs> His wife, Laura, is at home with her three-year-old daughter, so Stuart's mummy, Anne, has come along with him this evening. She says to stop him being silly and greedy. <laughs> so we shall see. Just 12 questions answered correctly is still all it takes to have me sign one of those elusive million pound checks. But all the first seven answers up to £50,000 now have to be given within a set time limit. After 50 grand, contestants can relax a bit and take as long as they like to answer. Now, as ever, you've still got 50 50. You've got phone a friend. You can ask the audience. Plus our brand new lifeline switch, but you do not earn that until you reach the £50,000 mark. For the first two questions, Stuart only has 15 seconds to answer, so he has to be decisive and being correct helps as well. Right, Stu, lots of luck. Thank you. Let's play brand new Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, question number one. I'll read out the question. The four options, as soon as they come up, the clock will start. OK, you'll only have 15 seconds. Here it comes. Which of these is a common summer allergy? Right, start the clock. Hay fever, crop fever, field fever, seed fever. That is hay fever, final answer. You're a good man, you've got 500 pounds. <laughs> well, just keep them coming. I don't know how to break this just to you, they might get a little harder. You have £500, it is the last point at which you could go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen, you have all three lifelines. Stuart, question number two would guarantee you £1,000. Here it comes. If something is described as pneumatic, it's most likely to contain which of these? Here they come. Air, ash, oil, water. That's air, final answer. It's the right answer, you've got a thousand pounds. So that's one thousand pounds safely in the bank for Stu, and there's even more good news. He now has 30 seconds to answer each of the next five questions. Not exactly time for a stroll down memory lane. Um, instant recall is quite handy. How are you feeling? Good? Focus? Quite calm, actually. Yeah, quite enjoying it so far. Mummy says, don't be silly. She said, don't get greedy, it's not the biscuit tin. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me again what you do, because you've, you've, you've had loads of jobs over the years, but mainly with kids. Mm -hmm. Basketball development. Yeah. What sort of age are these kids? Uh, well, the, the, the job itself is from under fives to adults. Basically make sure that there's, there's provision for all ages and abilities uh, for the sport uh, in Edinburgh. You used to do a soccer thing, didn't you, for, I mean, tiny kids, like 18 months? Yeah, um, I started a thing called Wee Dribblers. The Wee Dribblers? The Wee Dribblers. <laughs> uh, and that's for 18 months to three-year-olds, which is kind of just uh, ball skills, motor skills kind of stuff. And then we moved them into the mini kickers, and the, which is three to fives, and then all the way up to sort of 12-year-olds, and then hopefully start feeding them into clubs. OK. What's your, um, what's your plan? What's your strategy? If I could get anywhere... Near 20 grand, I, I would be delighted. I would be delighted. OK, we'll talk as we go. I want you to focus. You've got 30 seconds, OK? You have three lifelines. If at any point you want a lifeline, we'll stop the clock and you carry on after you use the lifeline. Question number three is for £2,000. Have a look, this is the question. Who won the X Factor in 2009? These are the options. Daniel Johnson, Ollie Murs, Stacey Solomon, Joe McEldry. That was Joe McEldry, final answer. Did you watch it? I did, actually. I really wanted Stacey to win. 
Sorry, Joe. It's the right answer. You got two thousand pounds. You weren't secret Jedwood fans in your house, were you? Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> okay, sorry, I thought I just mentioned it. No, clearly, no, no. clearly it's not wrong. Not my taste. No. Okay, right, you have two thousand pounds. Question number four is for five thousand. You've not yet touched any lifelines. Here it comes. What is the technical name for the voice box? These are the options. Tarsus, Sacrum, Ulna, Larynx. I think I know it, but I'd like to ask the audience, please. Chris. Okay, stop the clock. Right, audience, on your keypads, please. Then you just got comfy. Right, this is the question. What is the technical name for the voice box? It's worth £5,000 to Stu. A on your keypads is Tarsus, B is Sacrum, C is Ulna, D is Larynx. A, B, C or D. Don't you look nice now the lights have come on? All vote now. <laughs> Two percent Tarsus, three percent Sacrum, two percent Ulna. Uh, quite a large majority. Ninety-three percent think larynx. Right, restart the clock. I feel really stupid now. I haven't used that lifeline, but I decided to check it. So, yeah, larynx. Final answer. It's the right answer. You got five thousand pounds. So, Stuart from Dunbar is on £5,000. He has two lifelines remaining. He's got a 50-50. He can phone a friend. He's got three more questions against the big bad clock. And then, hopefully, if he gets there, he'll get the £50,000. And he can calm. And he will get another lifeline. But he's got to get there first. He's three right answers away. We'll take a break. Welcome back to the second part of tonight's New Look, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Time now for one of you at home to win some money. Yes, there's a £1,000 for one of you who can correctly answer this question. Which TV series is most associated with the phrase live long and prosper? A. Doctor Who. B. Thunderbirds. C. Star Trek. Or D. Blake Seven. All you have to do is text game G-A-M-E and your answer, A, B, C or D, to 84644. Or you can give us a call on 09012 931000. Players must be 16 or over and the lines will close towards the end of the show. For full terms and conditions, go to www.itv.com slash millionaire. Right, back to Stuart Craig from Dunbar. He's currently on £5,000. He's only used one lifeline. You're doing all right. Yeah, but I was disappointed to use that lifeline because I knew it was larynx, but I think when you're in the chair, you just have to double-check sometimes. Yeah, it's also it's like making sure, double sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, so. Right, so you have five grand. Let's concentrate. Still against the clock for three more questions. You can double your money history, up to £10,000. You've still got a 50-50. You've still got to phone a friend. Question number five is this. You'll have 30 seconds. In the Simpsons movie, what type of creature did Homer adopt? These are the options. Mouse, cow, pig, horse. He adopted a pig. Final answer. Spider pig. That's the right answer. You got £10,000. <laughs> you see, you're being calm, you're following mummy's advice, you're not being silly. Yep. So far. <laughs> so far, so good. You got, um... Because you spend most of your time looking after other people's kids. You've got kids yourself? Yeah, little one, Anna. She's uh, three. Does she know you're on? Does she sort of suss that Daddy's doing something today? Yeah, uh, I've, I've had a call today saying that I'm, I'm missed, so I better come home with some, some longer. <laughs> well, you come home with a grand, at least. Yeah, yeah. But I'm hoping you come home with rather a lot more. You've got £10,000. Right, Stuart, question number six is for £20,000. You've still got two lifelines. You're only two away from that big milestone of 50 grand. 30 seconds for your answer. Here it comes. In 2009, what was the main subject of the Kelly report? You've got 30 seconds. Royal family, prison reform, British Airways, MPs, expenses. I'm going to phone a friend, please, Chris. OK, stop the clock. Right. Now, let's have a look. Let's have a look at your friends. You're allowed up to three now. <laughs> yeah, what a strange bunch. Um, <laughs> there's Bill. Who are they? Now, who's Bill? Bill's my dad. OK. Natalie's, Natalie, who's clearly yeah. into a second bottle. Yeah. Um, and uh, Tom, and Tommy. Tommy's one of my workmates. OK. Is he all right, Tommy? Is he OK? Yeah, he's a good lad. 
that, that's about the only picture we could find that he wasn't hugging somebody or drinking something. So. Yeah, there's a theme there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, so who are you going to call? I'll phone my dad. Bill. OK, we'll phone Bill. Tell him the question, four possible answers. Um, sort of thing you'd know? He knows stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, he's just one of these people that absorbs things. OK, right. We'll phone Bill. Tell him the question, four possible answers. Hopefully one of those will lead to you getting £20,000. If not, you've still got a 50-50. You can always walk away at the end of this for £10,000. Hello? Bill? Yeah? Chris Tarrant? Hello, how are you? I'm well. Well, I've got your lad here. He's doing all right, actually. That's good. No, he's good. He's, uh, he's on £10,000 at the moment. It does Great. mean, though, he's stuck on a particular question, Bill. We're hoping you'll know the answer for him. It'll be worth £20,000. I'll do my best. There might even be a drink in it for yourself, Dad. Hello. All right, mate, so the next voice will be Stuart. So he'll tell you the question. There are still four possible answers, OK? Thank you. Stuart, fingers crossed, mate. Your time starts now. Dad, in 2009, what was the main subject of the Kelly Report? Was it the Royal Family, Prison Reform, British Airways or MPs' expenses? Not sure, Stuart. The um, Kelly Report. 2009. Does, does it ring a bell? Under 10 seconds. Not really. I'd be guessing, Stuart. Sorry. Okay, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, dad. <laughs> dad, Dad, Dad. Restart the clock. Can I take 50 50, please, Chris? Yeah, you can. Right, stop the clock. Computer take away two random wrong answers. Leave Stuart the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. You've got 23 seconds. Start the clock again. No more lifelines. I've got an inkling, but I don't know if I'm brave enough. MP's expenses, final answer. You just won £20,000. <laughs> oh. oh! Now, 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 you've got £20,000. Mummy says, don't be silly. Like the last one. <laughs> you have no lifelines. You can take £20,000. Have a look at question number seven, Stuart. It's worth £50,000. If you go for it and give me a right answer, that would be the minimum amount you would go back to your family in Dunbar with tonight. But <coughs> give me a wrong answer, matey, and you lose 19 grand. Yep. Please don't do that. Yep. OK, you'll have 30 seconds. Here's the question. The first scented waxwork at Madame Tussauds in London is of which celebrity? These are the options. Madonna, Kylie Minogue, Joan Collins, Christina Aguilera. I would be guessing, so can I have £20,000, please, and just leave? Final answer. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... I don't think anybody in this audience, including your mum and me, actually wanted the clock to go down to about one second. <laughs> I don't think you understood that. Mm. Um, which one do you think? I know a couple of them have got perfumes and stuff, so I, don't, I would guess Kylie, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if you said to me, Kylie, I would now be writing out a cheque for £50,000. <laughs> she has her own scent called Darling. <laughs> she wears. Don't All right, mate, give him a big hand. He goes away. <laughs> 20 grand better off. Well played, mate. Thank you very much. So, good start. Stuart goes away with £20,000. It does mean it's time to welcome our next, hopefully, quick thinking contestant against the clock from Harlesden in North West London. It's Lisa Dean. <laughs> Make yourself nice and comfy. OK. Lisa Dean was made redundant recently, but she's making a positive out of a negative by taking the opportunity to train for the job she's always really wanted to do as a relationship counsellor. Uh, she's a single mum to two teenagers. Lisa is working currently for a charity call centre uh, to pay the bills, basically. Lisa's son, Ruben, has come along with her this evening. He's got his eye on a share of the winnings, but mum says she has other ideas. 
<laughs> OK, 12 questions. The first seven against the clock. One million pounds up for grabs. Sounds easy when I say it like this. Three lifelines to get you there, up to 50,000, and then you get a fourth. 15 seconds to answer each of the first two. So, Lisa, lots of luck. Let's play Brand New Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Right, question number one is for £500. Lisa, I'll read the question, then you'll have 15 seconds as soon as the four options come on the screen. OK? okay. Ready for this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> OK, question number one is this. Complete this phrase, always the bridesmaid, never the... Here they come. Groom, bride, vicar, best man. That'll be bride, final answer. It's the right answer, you got £500. <laughs> OK, question number two. I have to tell you, it's the last point at which you could go home with nothing at all on this show. I'm sure it won't happen. It hasn't happened for a very long time. Question number two would guarantee you're going back with at least £1,000. Here it comes. Which former Spice Girl joined the Dancing on Ice judging panel in 2010? 15 seconds. These are the options. Jerry Halliwell, Melanie Brown, Emma Bunton, Melanie Chisholm. Emma Bunton, final answer. Baby Spice, it's the right answer, you've got £1,000. Now you're calm. Yes. You've had quite a sort of reshuffle of your life lately, haven't you? Yeah. And actually it's been quite tough on the family. Yes. Because obviously single mum, two kids, two big growing kids. Yep. And you're working for charity, but you're retraining... I've as... been in course, yeah. What, what do you actually want? Do you want to be a sex therapist? <sighs> Well, there's all different options you can go down with the counselling course that I'm doing. And so, do you want to be a sex that therapist? That kind of caught my eye out of one of them. <laughs> exactly, you do want to be a sex therapist. Yeah, I think it'd be a really good job to do. I do, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> now, Reuben here has been very sort of following mummy very carefully, not getting mummy yeah. out of his sight, but mainly because he hopes you're going to win lots of money, and he thinks he's on a bung. <laughs> well, I didn't get him anything for his 18th birthday. Um, he just turned 18 in January, so I think I might get him a little something if I get a little bit higher. Was that because you forgot or because he didn't have any money? it's been so hard. Listen, I really want you to get some money today. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got some. You've got some. You've got £1,000. Yep. <laughs> Question number three is for £2,000. Here it comes. You'll have 30 seconds from now on when the options appear on the screen. What colour are the leather seats in the House of Lords? 30 seconds from now. Blue, purple, black, red. 50-50, please. Right, stop the clock. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Lisa the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Blue or red? Right, restart the clock. Red, final answer. Didn't need that 50-50, did you, really? No, I thought it was that, just to be sure. It's good. You've got £2,000. It's the right answer. <laughs> You're saying one of the other things you would love is a good old girly holiday. Yeah. Because you haven't had one for a long three years now. Huh? Yeah, it's been too long. We go away, a group of us, and we have a good time. <laughs> OK, you have two grand. Question number four is for £5,000. Yeah. You'll have 30 seconds. Here it comes. What does it mean when food is described as picante? Here they come. Creamy, spicy, slow cooked, raw. I know this. I know this. But I'm going to ask the audience. OK, stop the clock. Right, audience, on your keypads, please. This is for £5,000 for Lisa. This is your question. What does it mean when food is described as picante? Uh, creamy is A on your keypad, spicy is B, slow cooked is C, raw is D. A, B, C or D, all vote now. Four percent say creamy, seventy percent say spicy, fourteen percent slow cooked, twelve percent raw. Restart the clock, you've got twenty seconds. Spicy, final answer. Oh. Go with that. Oh, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> Spicy final answer. I did know it. Why didn't you say it I then? I doubt in myself. Don't I doubt do yourself. That. 
Which is the right answer? You've got £5,000. Question number five is for £10,000. Lisa, don't forget, at any point you can take the money. You do yeah. not have to continue against the clock as it gets tougher. You still have a phone a friend. This is the question, 30 seconds to answer it. Here it comes. In the human body, what are flexors and extensors? 30 seconds. Bones, arteries, muscles, nerves. Muscles, final answer. It's very quick. I think you're right. Yeah, should be. Why? Because my boy training, physiotherapy. It's the right answer, you've got 10,000 pounds. I've got a horrible feeling it's going to get very, very scary. At this moment, Lisa is on £10,000. She is two <coughs> away from a huge cheque for fifty grand, which would mean a huge amount to you and your family. You only have one lifeline left. The next question will be for £20,000. Don't go away. Welcome back to the third part of tonight's new look, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Before we go any further, just a quick reminder of how you at home can win some money. Yes, there's a £1,000 for one of you who can correctly answer this question. Which TV series is most associated with the phrase live long and prosper? A. Doctor Who. B. Thunderbirds. C. Star Trek. Or D. Blake Seven. All you have to do is text game G-A-M-E and your answer, A, B, C or D, to 84644. Or you can give us a call on 09012 931000. Players must be 16 or over and the lines will close towards the end of the show. For full terms and conditions, go to www.itv.com slash millionaire. Right, back to Lisa Dean, who's well on the way to her mischievous girly holiday because she's currently on £10,000. She's only got one lifeline remaining, though. How do you feel? OK. I'm still, still nervous, but I'm OK. I'm more relaxed now. OK. Question number six, you can double your money to £20,000. You have got a phone a friend. You could use the phone a friend and still take the money. You have 30 seconds to answer this question. Which car company makes the Yaris model? Start the clock. Mazda, Volkswagen, Peugeot, Toyota. That would be Toyota, final answer. Got one? No, driven one. That's the right answer, you've got £20,000. Question number seven is for £50,000. You have one lifeline. If you give me a right answer, you no longer have to fight against the clock. You will get at least £50,000 and you get a brand new lifeline. But if you get this wrong, you lose £19,000. Please don't do that, Mr Bossy, OK? OK. Right, question number seven is for £50,000. Here it comes. You've got 30 seconds. Cladder. It's a traditional Irish version of what kind of jewellery? Start the clock. Necklace, ring, coronet, bracelet. I know the answer. B. Ring. Final answer. Why are you so certain? Cladder ring. You don't say cladder necklace, you don't say cladder bracelet, you don't say cladder coronet, you say cladder ring. Stop talking. You just want £50,000. <laughs> I've still got my phone a friend. Ooh. you still got a phone a friend? Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Ruben's just fainted. The audience <laughs> is in shock. Ooh. That's fantastic. 50 grand. You're telling me. <laughs> right. 
You have no longer to pit your wits against the big, bad ticking clock. You can take as long as you like to answer the next question. Have a look. That's what you've done. You will go home tonight with at least that amount of money. Tax-free. Take it. It's yours. Take it. £50,000 is now the very least that Lisa could go home with. And the better news for Lisa, she's now earned that extra lifeline switch. And she can get rid of a question she doesn't like the look of and switch it for a brand new replacement question. So you've got phone a friend, you've got switch. Five right answers between you and a million. It's getting silly now. It is. And serious. OK, have a look. Question number eight. You're guaranteed 50 grand. Question yeah. number eight is for 75,000. You might as well play this. Have a look at it. Tell me what you want to do. And take your time. What nationality is the artist Jack Vetriano? English. Scottish. Welsh. Irish. Well, I haven't got a clue, so I'm going to use... Now, will you have a friend that knows it? Possibly, yeah. Or you could switch it. But I think... I'll switch. Because I'm not 100% that they will know. What would you think? <coughs> have a guess. Go on. Wibble Jack Vetriano. That sounds like quite a, a more of an Italian name, and then the first name sounds English. Um. Go English. If you said to me English, you would have uh, still been on fifty thousand pounds. It would have been the wrong answer. The right answer is Scottish. Oh, which is good because you got rid of that. Let's ditch it, and she can switch it. Well, it won't be worse, but see if it's better. Which uppercase letter of the Greek alphabet most resembles a horseshoe? Alpha, Epsilon, Delta, Omega. Now, I think I know this. What do you think? Which one do I think it is? Yeah. Omega. Why? Um, I don't know the others. Alpha could be between Omega and Alpha, but I haven't got 50-50, so I'm going to have to find my friend. OK. Now, let's have a look. You're allowed up to three phone of friends. Let's have a look at them. Um, well, they're a strange trio, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Eugene and Mark. Who are they? Who's who? Brian is a fellow friend of mine. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Yeah. Eugene is um, a work colleague. And um, Mark is my... Friend's brother in law. Okay, Tell me now who? My tongue around that. Which of those three would know their Greek alphabet? It's going to be either Mark or Brian. I'll go with Brian. Right, we'll phone Brian. Um, tell him the question. Four possible answers. Shall I tell him it's worth 75 grand? I kind of focus him a bit. Yeah. To you. Yeah? Okay. Hello? Brian? Hello? Chris Darren, hello. Oh, hello, how are you? How are you, mate? All right, thank you. Well, we're good. Now, we're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Uh, I've got Lisa here. She's doing pretty well. Very good. Very In good. fact, she's doing very, very well. It does mean, though, she's stuck on a particular question. Um, she needs your help, and it'll be worth £75,000. Oh, marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> so, no pressure. All right, mate. OK. Right, next voice here will be Lisa's. Okay. She'll tell her the question. There are four possible answers. One of these is worth £75,000. OK. Okay. dokey. Lisa, fingers crossed. What's a lot, my darling? 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Brian? Hi, Lisa. Hiya. Which uppercase letter of the Greek alphabet most resembles a horseshoe? Is it Alpha, Epsilon, Delta or Omega? Which uppercase yeah. letter of the Greek alphabet most resembles a horseshoe? Not alpha. Go on, what else is there? Pardon? What, what, really? what eight, were the options? Eight sec. Alpha, epsilon, delta, or omega? I'd say uh, omega. OK, thanks. <laughs> Cut that a bit fine, didn't he? 29 and three-quarter seconds. Um, which is what you said. <clears throat> 
Thing is, on this one, you can't lose. No, I You've can't. You've got 50 grand. What's my so. lips? You've got 50 grand. <laughs> It still hasn't okay. sunk in, has it? No, not at all. Not have, a look, at all. have a look at the cheque. See what it says? Is that your name? £50,000. Now, you might as well play it. Yes, I will, and I will go with Amiga and final answer. You've just won £75,000! <laughs> Give us a check. Give us a check. Oh. <laughs> and now you're thinking, I'm wasting my lifeline. Not at all. Not at all. Well, he kind of made it sure was double back sure. up. Yeah, yeah. It was back up. Have a look. £75,000. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to give you that. <laughs> we don't want it. You've got that, OK? That's yours. OK. You can walk away with that, but the next question is worth £150,000. Find out what she does after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the final part of tonight's brand new Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where Lisa Dean is doing better than she could possibly have ever dreamed. She's currently on £75,000, although she no longer has any lifelines left to use. How are you feeling, Lisa? I can't explain it. It's, I just feel... It hasn't sunk in, but I feel... I feel a lot less nervous now. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, well, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Funny yeah. how 75 it's grand feeling. can it's soothe the nerves. It's a feeling. Funny enough. <laughs> now, you've got 75 grand, you've got no lifelines. Yeah. Question number nine is worth £150,000. You do not have to play this question. You can take £75,000. You know you're guaranteed £50,000, but if you do play number nine and give me the right answer, I double the money you've got there to £150,000. You're four away from a million. This is question number nine of a possible 12. Here it comes. Who was the famous great-great-grandfather of TV presenter Dan Snow? Alexander Fleming, Charlie Chaplin, Rudyard Kipling, David Lloyd George. One of those is worth £150,000. Great, great grandfather. I don't know Dan, Dan Snow, so there's no point in me even trying to guess because I don't know his. No. I haven't got Scooby. There's <laughs> a hint in your face that you don't care. That's right. <laughs> you happen you're right there, Chris. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to say. I have no idea. I don't know who Dan Snow is. Do I? TV presenter? No. So I will take the money, Chris. Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a big hand. She goes away with £75,000. I will tell you, and you couldn't care less. <laughs> I will tell you the right answer is David Lloyd George. Oh, I knew and Dan that. Snow. Oh, oh yeah, we're that. going to say that. And Dan Snow <laughs> is the son of Peter Snow. How much money have you won? Seventy-five grand. No, louder. Seventy-five thousand pounds. Louder, louder. Seventy-five thousand pounds. Big hand, seventy-five grand. Ruben, come on down and give your money a hug. I think you might get a birthday present. What a fabulous woman. Lisa Dean goes away with what will undoubtedly be a life changing sum for her and her two teenagers, £75,000. I think it still hasn't really sunk in. Now, though, it's time to meet our next wannabe millionaire from Stockton on Tees, Cleveland. It's Phil Smith. <laughs> Oh, 
Retail manager Phil Smith is passionate about all kinds of comedy. He's learning to play the guitar and he loves dressing up in fancy dress. Don't ask. He only got married last year, but unfortunately Natalie Phil's blushing bride couldn't make it along with him tonight. Phil says he screams the answers out at top volume when he watches the show at home, so for those of you with a nervous disposition, you should turn your TVs down now. <laughs> right, 12 questions. The first seven against the clock, three brand new lifelines to get you to 50,000, at which point you get a fourth to get you a million. Sounds very simple, doesn't it? 15 seconds for the first two questions, Phil, lots of luck. Let's play brand new Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> so, you ready for this? Yep. Question number one is for £500. I'll read out the question. There are four answers. As soon as they come up, the clock will start. You'll have 15 seconds to give me your final answer. Question number one. An insomniac is someone who is regularly unable to do what? These are the options. Eat, sleep, cry, spell. That'll be sleep, Chris, final answer. So right answer, you got 500 pounds. Good start. <laughs> OK, same routine. Question number two is for 1,000 pounds. It is the last point at which you could go home with nothing if you gave me a wrong answer. You've got 15 seconds to give me the right one. You have all three lifelines if you're not happy. This is the question. What is said to be the best medicine? Here they come. Love, life, laughter, lunch. That would be laughter. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £1,000. <laughs> what was that like for you at the back, watching Lisa? Was it like... Ooh. It was tense. Very tense, yeah. It's tense in here. Yeah. Question number three, then, is for £2,000. You have not yet touched any lifelines. The clock extends. You've got 30 seconds now to give me the right answer. Question number three for £2,000 is this. Which of these TV presenters was not a professional player of a sport? Which of these TV presenters was not a professional player of a sport? 30 seconds from now. Sue Barker, Gary Lineker, Andrew Castle, Steve Ryder. That would be Steve Ryder, final answer. Not Andrew Carson. He was a tennis player, wasn't he? Professional? Yes. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he got £2,000. <laughs> Sue Barker, obviously, also was um, a great lady tennis player, and Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker was a footballer. I mean, so many kids now, under a certain age, have no idea no. that Gary ever was actually one of our greatest footballers ever. One of the greatest goal scorers for the country. Well, he was, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Well, you think he's a bloke who sells crisps. <laughs> <laughs> you have £2,000. Question number four is for 5000 You have all three lifelines untouched. 30 seconds to give me the answer to this question. On the menu of an Indian restaurant, the word sag usually refers to which ingredient? Here they come. Lamb, spinach, yoghurt, lentils. I think I'd like to ask the audience, please, Chris. Final OK, answer. stop the clock. Right, audience, how many of you go out for Indian takeaways? How many of you stay home for Indian takeaways? <laughs> uh, audience, this is the question. It's for £5,000. On the menu of an Indian restaurant, the word sag usually refers to which ingredient? Now, A on your keypads is lamb, B is spinach, C is yoghurt, D is lentils. One of those worth £5,000. First lifeline feels needed. All vote now. Uh, Seven percent say lamb. Seventy-six percent spinach. Seven percent yogurt. Ten percent lentils. Big majority. It's up to you. Restart the clock. I will go spinach. Final answer. Did you know it? I was tossing between spinach and yogurt. A strange life you lead. Yes. <laughs> it's the right answer. You got five thousand pounds. You have five grand. 
You have two lifelines remaining. You have three questions between you and a guaranteed £50,000 and another lifeline. And you would no longer have to play against the big, bad, nasty, ticking clock. Question five, though, you've still got 30 seconds to give me the right answer. It's for £10,000. Here it comes. Derek Acora is most famous as what? These are the options. Medium, singer, weatherman, chef. I know he's not a singer. Medium, Chris, final answer. How did you know he's not a singer? Because I know he's a medium. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did it take you 11 seconds to think he was then? Because then I was trying to think of chefs and, and weathermen, and then it just clicked that Derek Acora's that ghost thing he does. And uh, straight away I just thought, medium. Phil, stop wittering. Yeah. You just won £10,000. <laughs> Right, you have £10,000. I will warn you, if you give me a wrong answer at this point, you would lose nine of the ten grand you've accumulated so far. What sort of money are you aiming at? When you came down, you thought, if I could get that, I could go home to Natalie and say, Dream Boy is home. Here's the winch. <laughs> what would, I wouldn't uh, say Dream what would Boy. Um, 50000 would be would be brilliant. It'd be just enough to pay off a few debts from the marriage. A few, from few, the marriage? Yes, the marriage. OK. <laughs> You have £10,000, Phil Smith. Question number six is for £20,000. You have two lifelines. Here's the question. Where are a horse's gaskins? These are the options. Ears, shoulder, back, legs. I'd like to phone a friend, please, Chris. OK, stop the clock. Right, who are your phone of friends? Let's have a look at these ugly mugs. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Mike, Pete and Peter, who are they? Uh, Mike is one of my best friends, he was joint best man at my wedding. <laughs> uh, Pete is his dad, All Right. and Peter is uh, a colleague from work. OK, so you've got Mike, you've got Pete and Peter. Yes. Which one? I would like to ring Pete, please. Not Peter, Pete. Pete. OK, we'll phone Pete, tell him a question, four possible answers, one of them is worth £20,000. Is he a horse rider? No. <laughs> But normally he's a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hello? Pete? Yeah? Chris Tarrant on Who Wants To Be A Millionaire. Hello? Hi, Chris. Hello. Now, I've got Phil here. He's, um, he's stuck on a particular question. It's worth £20,000 to him. Right. OK, you sound very businesslike. Uh, he says <laughs> you're the fountain of all knowledge. Uh, he's exaggerating, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, Phil, we're about to find out in the next 30 seconds. Oh, okay. So, the next voice here will be Phil. So, tell him the question. There are four possible answers. One of these is worth £20,000. All right, matey. OK, thanks. Phil, fingers crossed. Your time starts now. Pete, where I are know. horses' gaskins? Is it ears, shoulder, back or legs? Can you say that again? Where are a horses' gaskins? Ears, shoulder, back or legs? I'm sorry, Phil, I'm not really sure about this. Um, I think it's legs, but I'm, I'm, only, I'm only guessing there. OK, I, I five really seconds, say. mate, thanks. OK. Cheers. Cheers, Phil, good luck. We start the clock. It's ticking away. 50-50, um, please. Right, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Phil the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Ears and legs, restart the clock. Legs, final answer. Could have taken the money, could have taken 10 grand. It's the right answer, you've got £20,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Thank you, Phil. Thank goodness for that noise. That's all we've got time for. It really has been the most extraordinary night. Earlier on, Stuart Craig took his mummy's advice, didn't get too greedy or silly, and sensibly walked away with £20,000. Single mum, what a great girl. Lisa Dean defined the expression life-changing when she went off clutching her cheque for £75,000. And Phil Smith here, thanks to the fountain of knowledge, ends the show on 20 grand, but it has cost him all three lifelines to get there. He's back next time. Lines have now closed on our viewers' competition. One of you at home has got a cheque on its way.
The correct answer was C, Star Trek. So from me and everybody here on the new look, who wants to be a millionaire, we'll see you next time. Good night. So what is it that makes Smithy very, very angry? After the break, we're in Sun Hill for the bill.